So these extraterrestrials travel between the past and the future, and we can as well. And you can, when you travel back in time, you're all right, you can come back. But when you travel into the future, you can lose your life, as in the amount of time you have in the physical life. So traveling to the future is actually worse because you can lose time of, your, of yourself. What do you mean? Like, okay, you know if you're traveling in a car, yeah? Yeah. There is like a, a speed limit. And if you're traveling faster, you age. And there are machines that they use that can regress you. Like if you travel um, faster than, you know what I mean, the normal speed you're supposed to be traveling, you can actually age. But then if you break the time barrier, it's like, imagine how you're living now, yeah? You have a certain amount of time that you're gonna live. But if I was to fast forward the time, like really speed it up, it's like I'm speeding up your, your years. And that's what happens when you're traveling because your, your physical body can't withstand certain um, like pressures. That's why you age as you get older. But when you break the time barrier, you can actually become younger because you can um, like arrive even when people go to space, yeah, like uh, astronauts, they tell you they, ca they can come back and they'll be younger or like because of the different time belts, basically. That's how it happens. And there are machines that the government have had. If you read the scroll, Man from Planet Risk by Ma Dr. Malachi Z. York, he explains this in, in great detail, how they can regress you back to a baby or speed you up to a, an, an adult or an elder, because it's all to do with the technology of how you're able to manipulate and speed, um, you know, like your, your molecules and things like that. So does that mean that Gabriel is from the future? Yeah. So he's from, is he from our future now? M Dr. York's from our future now, as okay. in the being Do um, Yanun. Yeah. And when they get you to explain Yanun as well, but when yeah. you say they're from our future, so yeah. they've come back to give information. That's right. Because of what they've seen. That's or, right. What's, what's the reason they've done that? Right. So even just not to take it, make it too deep here, yeah? There are people who say they've been abducted by extraterrestrials, taken away, taken to a craft, and they show them their future, the future of what's going to happen, and they say to them, come back and try and help humanity and warn people of what's, what we're doing. Because if we carry on on the same path, like destroying the water, destroying the planet, destroying the things that our planet rely on, we can end up destroying the planet. Like for example, when they dropped the atomic bomb in Nagasaki, yeah, and Hiroshima in the in the wars, they risked like because it's the first time they were using like atomic bomb on that level, they they risk cracking the entire planet. And remember what I said before that you have beings that live in the waters, beings that live in the caverns, beings that are actually here on this in the atmosphere, and they didn't want that, so they had to put a stop to it. This is why there were crafts that were seen over the White House in 1945. I put that in our book, um, you know, um, the fast track spiritual and conscious journey. Like we put a lot of information in there. So yeah, this is what they do. They, they come back or they warn you of the, the path you're on. The thing is, extraterrestrials are not really allowed to interfere with our natural development as a species. But what they can do is influence certain people to help because they're not like because okay we have laws on the planet that like we have the united nation laws we have within our jurisdictions we will have like um, here we have magistrates court then we will have like um, um crown court and in america they will have like state courts and then they will have federal courts and outside of the planet you have galactical laws and you have beings from different galaxies that attend these meetings and one of the places they attend the meeting is Mount Shasta, which again, we have a book called um, the Akasha Records that talk about this. And Yanun, as in Dr. York, the being that speaks through Dr. York, he attends these meetings. So you have something called the Galactical Federation. The Galactical Federation is a federation like the United Nations, but made up of different extraterrestrials from different galaxies, because they all have a stake in what's going on on the planet because the planet is a part of the solar system and the solar system um, is a part of the galaxy. And our galaxy, which is the 18th galaxy, is next door to the 19th galaxy. The 19th galaxy is where Yanun comes from, right? From a planet called Risk in a you know, place called Ilion. And, and so 
if something happens on the 18th galaxy, it will affect the 19th galaxy and the 19th galaxy will affect all the other galaxies. So it can be like a ricochet effect, right? Like a dominoes effect. So it's not as simple as us just being irresponsible on the planet, like, you know what I mean? Firing missiles and blowing up things with atomic bombs because it can have a, a, a catastrophic effect on all the other beings. This is why they will step in when it's going to get to a point where it's going to affect them. So they will step in, they will send all these people, people call like, you know, your Muhammad and your Jesus. And because Jesus' real name in the galactical level is Sananda or Sananda, right? And Gabriel and all these people, they will send them to come, give humanity information and say, live like this. But then the disagreeable, because you have the disagreeable I mentioned already, the Antichrist, people that like Nana and who he also has his own agents on the planet. Because again, if you go back to the biblical text, it says in Revelation 12, 7, there was a war in the heavens. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels. And um, they, they lost the dragon. This is where the word dragon ties into Draco. These beings are from the Draco constellation, the draconian beings. That's what they are. They're reptilian beings. And a lot of them, they just want to go over, go over to other places, take over, rule, and they basically create a lot of chaos. Then you have the agreeable ones like Michael, or the word Michael is Mikael. In, in different languages, it will be a different tone. Mikael or Murdoch or Marduk. And he is the archangel. They call him Michael or Mikael. And his job is to, it depends on how you translate it as well from what language, it's like who dares to be like El. He is the warring angel. He is the one that protects the good side. And he's got his army or his angels. And the word angel in Greek is angelos. And in the Hebrew, that will be um, Malachi. And Malachi means my angel. And if you read the books of Malachi, which is like the last chapter in the Old Testament, that's like, read um, chapter 4, verse 2. It talks about Malachi coming with the son of righteousness, which is going to be the, the time period we're in now, the sun cycle. And... Um, and then the last book in the New Testament is the book of Revelation, which is dealing with this angel that's coming. People think it's Jesus, but it says that it's Jesus' book. John had the vision and it's Jesus' book and my angel, Mikael, that's the angel that's coming to pour out and um, open the seventh seal, which is giving the information to the world and telling us all these things that are coming and what's going to happen and how you should get yourself prepared and basically clean yourself inside out with all sabbat, yeah? So when you said that, that Jesus is, is up there as well, is it the actual Jesus that they say was crucified on the cross? Is it him that's up there in the meetings? Right, so what your good question, I didn't kind of finish that. So what religion has done, it has taken these real stories, true stories, as given to us by the ancient, and made them into, like, the basically misinformation, turned it into misinformation, and giving you like the wrong stories of what's actually really going on. So when I say um, Sananda, this is... Is that Jesus? That's who people will call Jesus. Sananda. Yeah, cool. but his name's not Jesus. It's That's what I'm, what I'm saying that in the... But would that be the same person that people say Yeshua? Yeah. Is that the same person as Sananda? Right, yeah. Okay. But what I'm saying is there's different Yeshua's and different Christ's and different... And people mix them up. So it's not it, just one person? No, that's okay. what I'm saying. It's like in the Bible, yeah. they have three Jesuses that are put into one story. Okay. So like, for example, you've got Yeshua, then you got Bar Jesus. The word Bar is left untranslated because remember the Bible is translated and in the Hebrew, in the, in the Arabic, it would be like Bin or Ibn, yeah? Um, so they've left Bar, which literally means son. So when you say Bar Jesus, you're saying son of Jesus because... Jesus did have children, as I've said as well. And then you have the third Jesus, who's known as Cleophas, which is the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. So the three of them, so you had Yahshua, who had a son, whose name is Bar Jesus. And then you have Cleophas, which is the son of Cleopatra and Mark Antony. And so there are three stories. One of them went to India and he was teaching and he got into the Kabbalah and all that kind of stuff. And he was being persecuted. So when they said like he was crucified, that was not the real Jesus or the Yeshua, right? 
But what I'm saying is every person has a galactical name or their spiritual being. That's where the name Sananda comes in because that would be the spiritual being. Just like Dr. York, he's here as a physical being on the planet, but the real essence of him is Yanun in the intergalactical level, you see. So that's why people get confused. So even yourself, even myself, when you're born, you go through different titles and as you progress in your development and your attainment in terms of your how you're raising yourself, you get initiated into certain orders and then you get your names. So you have your birth name, your life name and your death name where in ancient Egypt, the people will try and get those tones because when you're crossing over, you go through certain, for lack of a better word, um, examination to, to get, you know, allowed into certain gates and then you'd have to answer some questions and one of them would be your name.